In this last lecture for this module, we'll recap how you look at opportunities, not because they're a business opportunity that you see because of trends, but how you look at them in the context of the industry that you're trying to get into and how you optimally design and organize your business so as to take advantage of those things that help a startup and avoid those things that support the incumbent businesses. Established firms have a learning curve. They've been down the learning curve. They know what they're doing. They have an established representation or reputation. People know who they are. They, <clears throat> they might have loyal customers that trust them. They have a positive cash flow. They can use that money to support these new ideas. They don't have to go out and raise money. They have economies of scale. They only have to create one more product. They already have a very kind of a low cost infrastructure. They can beat you on cost. And they have lots of complementary assets, like, for example, advertising or similar products. They have people in the marketplace selling other products that can just sell your pro their, their new products as well. They have advertising. They build a brand. People trust the brand. There's all sorts of complementary assets that help them that you don't have working for you. So what favors us, the new firms? Remember, key, trumpeter. Creative destruction, competence destroying change. When the things that used to be the way things got done, like gasoline powered cars and coal powered electricity and those sorts of things, or old old ways or uh, traditional ways of uh, raising crops, when all, when things that are used to seem to work are no longer the way it's being done or will be done in the future, then you have an opportunity. The old people fight back. If you think about the alternative energy right now, there's uh, most of the jobs that are being created in the energy sector are in alternative energy sources, solar panel installations, wind turbine installations, those sorts of things. Lots of jobs being created. You don't hear about that because on the political side, the people that are trying to sustain the old ways of doing things with coal-powered coal plants and the like, that they're making a, an argument that this should not be, uh, there should not be a change because they want to make sure they maintain this advantage. Their business will go away if we start moving too fast into alternative energy sources. Competence destroying change. You can see it all over the place. Likewise, discrete products, something that it's somebody wants and you can just sell it directly to them. Uh, an example of that is things you hear on the radio, legacy box. What are they selling? They're allowing you to put some old memorable you know, old videotapes or CDs or pictures or photos or slides into a box. You send it to them, they come back, and it's all digitized. Right? That's a discrete product that they can sell, discrete service that they can sell. Ideas that are related to human capital, people doing things, creativity, those are the kinds of areas. And if you have an opportunity, you want to use the creative side to build your business around. The human capital side is where you build your business. So here's the key idea to remember when you're thinking not only about finding a business opportunity, but finding out how you structure your business, your new startup business, so as to take advantage of that opportunity in the way that favors the, your startup structure and your startup culture versus existing players. How do you think about that problem? Large companies, they locked in their own ways. They try to protect them. They're conservative. They stay there. They're afraid that if they move in a new direction, their customers will leave them because their customers want them to continue serving them. They're dependent upon the way they've done business before. They actually are drawn to not change because their customers don't want them to change. They're hindered by these routines that continually support that. And the feedback they get is that new way of doing things doesn't really work in the market because that's what their customers are saying. But in fact, you might know differently based upon your research and your analysis. Because they have to satisfy their existing customers, they are slower than the marketplace in terms of adapting to change. As a startup, however, you can think in new ways. You can talk to people about how they want it to work in the future. You could I, I think of ideas of designs of how things could work using new technologies. And you don't really have to worry about your existing business. You can form new ways of doing things using technologies that might have 
really change those old companies that they don't want to do that because they know what they're doing and they have economies of scale. You could leapfrog those with your new routines. You don't have to worry about the existing customers who don't want you to change. You only have to worry about the new customers that will be on board for the way that you're changing the way the industry is working. Trumpeters, creative destruction. That's the key. Not so much, it does help you find opportunities, but it's how you figure out how you position your business going forward so that it most you take the most advantage of the things that help a startup, the things that allow you, human capital, being able to change quickly, those kinds of things. That's how you structure your business, no matter what you're trying to do in the new world or the new uh, emerging trend, how the trends are emerging going forward. You still want to structure your business in a way that as the, gives you maximum advantage vis-a-vis -vis the incumbents. Trumpeter, creative destruction, remember that. In the next module, we'll talk about recognizing those opportunities, how you bring a team together, how you look at what's happening in the marketplace, recognize opportunities, what sort of dynamics work that way. We'll see you then.